Welcome to 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting from Sedona, Arizona. Uh, I'm back home in my other home in the U.S., and it feels good to be here. This is my power, power place. Uh, some of you have been here with me uh, because we had two retreats, two or three retreats here in Sedona already, so... We've been together. Those of you who are viewing me on uh, Instagram and try to register on Zoom, uh, what has happened was uh, Zoom has upgraded its security uh, system, and we had to send a brand new link to everybody. And um, so that has created some confusion. Some of the links don't work for some reason in different countries. So... Um, <laughs> Go, go to my website, zaratustra.tv, and register from my website in order to uh, be able to come on the Zoom and connect with us. Do a meditation. Um, let's relax, become quiet. We disconnect from the world outside as if it doesn't exist. And we just dive inwards. We dive within ourselves. We just come to this place and stay still, stay indifferent to what is happening in the world. Stay indifferent to what is happening even inside you. Uh, have an attitude of indifference, indifference into whatever it is you're here you're present you're aware but you're not involved there's no involvement you're uninvolved yet here there's a difference big difference in being here and being involved in the in the world of thoughts or simply be the observer. Simply here, now. In this vastness of I am, I am this, I am, I'm here. And just available in this moment. Whether your eyes are open or closed, you're simply available in this moment.
in the world of chaos, the world of the mind that thoughts rule and it's busy and busy. That there's this misunderstanding of trying to learn how to use the power of the mind and instead activating the mind, which is takes you away from inner silence. The more you're inside and you're quiet and you are Zen and you have no thoughts, you have gone beyond the thoughts, the more powerful you become. Not you as an individual, you as that which is everywhere. In the middle of this chaos, somebody has to be still and quiet. In every region, in every town, every city around the world, there must be people who are not engaged with the story of the world. They're not trying to save the world. They're not trying to correct the world. Not even manifesting a better world. None of that. Simply being quiet and being here. Pure silence. Learn to be quiet. Learn to be still. Slowly, slowly come back, come back here. So um, I still don't know what the topic of the conversation is today. So I'm gonna just see where this is gonna take us. Um, and then we give it a title later. One uh, favor you can always do to yourself on this path and this work is, is the self-observation that if you can develop this ability of 
observing yourself, of watching yourself. And especially in the area of reactions. And this I've noticed a lot with a lot of people around me, uh, friends, family, that, and also when I watch some of the movies uh, or a lot of the movies, TV series, everything is based on reaction, reactionary. And this drama of life based on somebody says something to you you don't like or your partner does something you don't like. And uh, immediately there is a reaction. There is a, there is a, um, whatever it is, somebody done something or tells you something. And instead of practicing number one step as staying still. So you're staying in your stillness. So somebody, let's say, comes to me and let's see, I, one of my friends after a while, I'm here in Sedona right now visiting. Let's say supposedly um, somebody comes and criticizes me for whatever reason. Um, and we're programmed in a, we've been conditioned that if somebody tells you something, you're about to react back, get upset. But let's say somebody, um, I'm trying to use a good example. All right, Zaratustra, you're an asshole. Zaratustra, you don't call your friends or you don't look after your friends. Let's say somebody, let's say a friend of mine I ran into and he or she comes and tells me like, hey, you don't pay attention to your friends. You don't call them. You don't take care of them, blah, blah, blah. And in an angry way, she dumps this on me. And one of the, the very precious uh, jewels that you can own and develop within yourself in your spiritual practice is to learn staying still. Somebody throws something at you and you don't react. You simply hear it. It's the first thing you do. You hear it and you look into it to see if there's a validity to it. Is it true? Is, this, is there truth in it? Before I just fire back. And also allowing yourself like a few minutes, five minutes or something, practicing this, not to react, not to say something back. Stay still and just let it come. You observe it, you hear it, you process it, and it goes through you, but you don't respond. You get into a practice of not reacting. And it's very, very different than our conditioning because we've been so conditioned throughout history to react. Get upset, get emotional. You know, let's say I make a comment to you like, oh, you put a couple of pounds, you put a little bit of weight on, for example, oh, your chicks are a little bit bigger. And then all of a sudden you're just like, Oh, oh my God, what does this mean? Oh, he's saying I'm fat. Or maybe your lover tells you that. Or maybe your lover tells you, you know what, hon? Do you mind if you go brush your teeth? And then all of a sudden, you're so insulted because he has insulted you. You have, you have bad breath. Everybody has bad breath every once in a while. So you go to the dry cleaner, you, you take your things to the dry cleaner, you go pick them up and one of them is messed up and one of one of one pieces of your clothing is not done right or they burn something or they stain something and 
then you tell them something and they're really being rude to you. And they're telling you painful things. And you want to blow up and beat the hell out of them. You use that opportunity. I'm not saying don't answer back. I'm not saying be, you have to take the abuse, especially for the women, because women throughout the history have been really suppressed. There's been thousands of years of suppression of, of women, female energy. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about developing, even let's say with your girlfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend. And then let's say my, my girl, my woman tells me that, hey, I want to explore other men. I want to kiss somebody. I, wanna, I want to, I don't want to just be with you all the time. And now I'm all upset and angry and throwing a tantrum that, oh, we need to separate and we need to go our own ways. No, she just wants to, she's being honest about that she wants to experience other people or have the opportunity to experience other people. Not necessarily she will do it. So if I stay still and it's like, okay, you know, I hear it and I'm not reacting. And I'm not talking about being a stupor. I'm not talking about being dumb. Like you're here like a statue and you don't react to anything. That's not what I'm saying is you don't allow your emotions rule stuff immediately right away. So you practice staying still. You practice not reacting. So you have to catch yourself. This requires self-observation because at times you forget and you become very reactive. And then you, have, you need to become aware of it. You notice it. And then the next time that this happens, you don't respond. Again, I use another example. Let's say you're at work and your boss comes to you and says, Hey, Anita, you're too slow. You're not getting things done. You're not really. You need to be quicker. And instead of becoming very reactive and very upset, you just say, okay. And that's it. There's no arguments. There's no going back and forth. Okay. And you continue doing what you do. but you don't react. Or with your kids, it's very easy. You say something to your kids, they react, they start telling you some stuff, and then you keep going back and forth, back and forth. Again, you practice not reacting especially to the people that they pull your trigger easily. Moms are very good. They can, at least for guys, moms can pull the trigger really fast. You know, it comes to Thanksgiving or Christmas or something, and then you go stay with your family for a few days. You know, a lot of people living, they're single and they live on their own. And they're not used to being with the family. And then during Christmas or Thanksgiving, they have to go stay with the family for a few days. And there's a lot of like triggers being pulled because of all these old stuff. So the key is that you are aware of it and you practice not reacting. And then... Suddenly you realize that, okay, no. So what's the benefit of this? You're not reacting. Okay. All right, Zoratustra. I learned to do this and I'm not going to react. So what is the benefit of it? How is it going to be helpful? And it's basically that you start to 
raise your vibrations to a higher frequency because you're not getting involved into the mindy stuff. You're starting to evolve from micro vision into the macro by not being triggered easily with your emotions all the time, which that's been happening throughout the course of history. These religious wars that we have, that people go to war and the way they react, all these wars were based on an emotional reaction of how to get people excited to go to war to protect the religion against another nation. It comes from reaction. How many times you've destroyed a relationship by not being very diplomatic? Somebody said something to you and, and you just had to fire back at them. And then had you just kept your mouth shut, things would have been a lot different or smoother, but you couldn't. And we all get challenged with this all the time. But the more, because there's got to be an evolution. But this evolution that we talk about, it's not like we're going to look holy. You know, I talk about spiritual stuff. I'm doing breath work. I go take breath work classes. Okay, good. I go to cacao ceremony, all right? I'm going to some workshops, but they have to translate to your daily life. That in everyday life, you have brought this training that you've learned from spiritual practice and you're putting it to work. And you're able to eventually evolve into a higher, higher frequency by not allowing your emotions to rule you. And that's not suppressing the emotions. That is by recognizing a lifetime, a generations of reacting to emotions, that your reactions come from that space and you catch it, you catch yourself. So you can elevate. So your partner comes and tells you, you know what? I don't love you anymore. I'm, I'm not feeling it anymore. It's, I, I feel it's over. I want to move on. And you don't crash. You don't just fall down to the bottom of the canyon emotionally you have evolved that you can hear this news and you can stay with it and you can just feel like, what is it triggering inside me, this news? Instead of going crazy and yelling and crying and pointing finger at the other person that they're leaving you or they're assholes or it's triggering maybe abandonment inside me. The fear of being alone, fear of loneliness. Maybe that's what it's triggering. So then you learn that about yourself. And now there's room for evolving to a higher level. I mean, you can sit down and all, read all these beautiful books all day long, listening to a lot of different teachers on YouTube or going to different workshops or seminars, but it has to be at the end of the day translated into the everyday life. There has to be a translation of it. If you're not going to be translated to your everyday life, then it has no value. It was just a course that you took. You filled up your time. Yes, you acquired some more knowledge, but you're not living it. You have to be able to live it.
That's the importance. That's where the value is. And that comes from the ability to start to look at yourself and to stay conscious of this, to be not to fall asleep into the old pattern. And that comes again to very, very connected to all these teachings of reaching our consciousness to 5D consciousness. Is that the ability to go beyond the mind and to observe the mind from the outside and see what the mind is doing and see what the emotions do, how they rule things, but you're outside, you're here. You have developed the ability to come outside of the unit, the character of this movie, and you're observing it. And when things happen that you don't like, you're not taking it personally. You're aware that this is a motion of consciousness is happening in consciousness because consciousness is constantly dancing with itself is playing with itself so there's interaction in this dimension with everything which every interaction that you have with anything is you're having it with your own self because in the substratum of the very base of everything, there is nothing else. There's only one thing that is experiencing everything some simultaneously. A simultaneous experience of the divine self of the consciousness of God simultaneously experiencing itself in everything the good the bad and the ugly they're all being experienced from this place of the being which is very still it's like hmm. you're sitting here and it's watching and all these things come and go. All these dance, dances of the emo stuff of life appear and disappear. All these different eras, these things that are happening in the world. They appear and they disappear. But you remain indifferent to it within yourself. You're, you're, you stay in this place of indifference, of which direction it's going to go. You're simply watching it. And that's where the master is. That's the seat of the master. That's where the Buddha is. It's in the body-mind mechanism gets affected by stuff. Maybe it doesn't like cold weather. Maybe it's tired. Maybe it's... It gets irritated in the looks, but inside it's very still, it's very quiet. Then you will see when you're able to develop that within yourself, you're entering into the macro vision. It's the macro consciousness rather than the micro. You have evolved. And you will see like a lot of the things don't bother you. A lot of things don't fear you. Right now, when you are in this place of reactions with the world, you always get triggered and always fear is created. 
what's going to happen? What's going to happen with all these news you're hearing all day long? So it drags you back into where you were in the world of thoughts. So you have to free yourself from that. And to free yourself, A, you learn to be silent. B, you learn to stay still. And then you start to pop out. Anybody has any questions? There's a message here. Let me check the message. Put it, send me a message. Okay. Well, well done, Hilda. So, any comments, questions? Yes. I think it's difficult to, to be quiet all the time. You, you think what? I think it's difficult to be quiet. Right. Have a quiet mind. So do you have any tricks? Uh, yeah. The, it, it's the... Okay, it's not that you are actively trying to make your mind quiet all the time because the thoughts are traveling in your head. You're having thought process. That's a part of the deal. The mind is active. Yes. Right. So you have this thing that is active, is working all the time, is doing its thing. So you can't stop it. But what you can do is you can notice it. So you are here noticing this is running. This is running and you're here noticing it. Mm -hmm. Because you say like, it's hard to keep the mind quiet all the time. Okay, well, yeah. yeah. From where are you seeing this thing? How do you notice that? You are noticing it because you are not the mind. You're, you're able to observe the mind. Yes. You're able to know that there's a mind. Okay. So who is knowing there's a mind? How do you know there's a mind? Because you're not it. If you were the mind, you would not know. No. The fact that you're noticing it, it must be separated from you. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, where you are noticing it from, that one is not affected. That one is silent all the time. You're here and you're aware of the mind going like da, 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 da. This one here is quiet. So from where I notice my mind, where am I? I'm somewhere else. So the teaching is not about quieting the mind. The teaching is to recognize where you are seeing the mind from is very quiet to recognize your seat. If you recognize that, then you don't need to spend any time trying to quiet your mind because you realize you're not the mind and the mind is gonna do its thing. Some days is a lot more busy, some days it's quiet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get very identified with it and there's nothing you can do about it, it takes you. But you always come back to recognizing it that you are not the mind. Okay. And that's where things shift. 
it changes. It, there's a click happens by being able to see the mind. You hear it. Yeah, of course, it's inside. There's thoughts going all the time. Because no one ever told you you are not the mind. All of your life, nobody has ever told us that. There hasn't been any kind of training, any kind of like pointing out. No one's pointing this out to us. So you never doubted. Because you think what you're thinking, and I'm not saying you, Marit, I'm talking about all of us, is what is going on in my head is who I am. This is what I think. All of my life, I, I don't even doubt it because you're not even aware of it. Until a point for me, when Master Punjaji appeared in my life and he said, Zarathustra, you're not your mind. Until then, I never had an idea. And now that you begin to realize, you get an idea that, wait a minute, I can observe my mind. So where is me that I say I, and where is the mind that I can observe it? It's very, very easy. It's so simple that it's so easy to miss it because it's so obvious and it's so out there, but no one's saying anything about it. But yeah, of course, we, we need to learn it. We're learning it. We need to train for it to get out of the old conditioning that the system that is running you and the system that's running you is, has up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. You're, you're happy, you're depressed, you're sad, you're, you're down, you're up, you're down. It's up and down all the time. So we want to free ourselves from this yo-yo. Mental yo-yo or emotional yo-yo. How do I free myself from this? Because there has to be somewhere that is in the middle that doesn't have these ups and downs because it's not fun. These ups and downs are not fun. The up part is fun, but then you just dive down into depression and fear. Bryden is laughing. She knows what I'm talking about. And you are takes it takes you to misery and you suffer. So how can I free myself from suffering? Um, conventional wisdom says that you need more stuff. You need more money. You got more sex. You need more power. You need another home. If I had that, 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 I would be fine. But that's objects. That's acquiring objects. They don't eliminate suffering. You're still going to have ups and downs because it's internal. So how do I free myself from that? That's the key. Anybody has any other questions or comments? Thanks, Marit, by, by bringing it up.
But let me tell you something. I, you know, I mean, people say like, people come and say like, it's very difficult to stop the mind. Okay, don't stop the mind. All right. Let me tell you another trick. Take a look. Look at your mind right now. And look and see what are you thinking? Are there, do you have any thoughts right now? Are there any thoughts in this moment? Are you having any thoughts? So you just look. Look, look inside, look at your thoughts. And I promise you, most of the time, they just disappear. They're not, they're not there. You look and you're just observing if I'm hearing any thoughts right now. And they disappear. There is none. What happens to them? They disappear. You look inside and they're not there. Thoughts, they lose their power when you're observing them. It's very simple. This is not like something sophisticated, and you can examine it for yourself. Look inside, look at the content and what you're thinking about. Take a look from within. That means now you're proactive instead of reacting to your thoughts. We're not trying to create thoughts. We're not manipulating thoughts. We're not using the power of the mind. This is not what I teach. Okay? You're simply observing your thoughts and all of a sudden they don't exist. Remember, thoughts, thoughts could be very heavy. If you pick one up, it can drag you down. If you pick up a thought that I am not handsome enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not good enough. So you pick up the thought that I'm not good enough. Now, this thought starts to drag you down because you're feeding off of it all the time. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough is a thought. Nobody comes and tells you every day that you're not good enough. I mean, there's some people in a marriage, they may just have a disturbed, distorted marriage and they tell each other, they're, but... Other than that, ordinarily, nobody comes and tells you every day you're not good enough. You're the only one who manufactures this thought and then buys it, takes it. So you simply are aware of what is going on. You take a look and you don't have to always, all day long, you're just paying attention to your thoughts. That's very exhausting. That's a full-time job. The mind is running for itself. 
The mind is like a radio. It's a radio which is, is on. Do you remember those days, like your mom was cooking in the kitchen and she had the TV or the radio on? And you're, in, you know, you're walking from shower, you go to your bedroom, you go to the living room, you know, then you're hearing the TV or the radio on. It's on all the time. Okay, you remember that? Or have you done that? Or you do it now? That, that sound of the TV or radio is the same as your mind. It's just on. It's just, it's going on all the time. So inside your head, you're hearing thoughts all the time. Sometimes it's, it's less noisy. Sometimes it's more, more noisy. But you're hearing it all the time. So, but... How are you aware of it? Who's noticing this? Ordinary person who doesn't have any kind of spiritual training is just going crazy because this mind is so busy all the time is driving them crazy. And they think they are the, the thoughts. But the spiritual man, the one who's been working at itself, with the right training, it becomes, there's an awareness. Something awakens inside you that you become aware that you're not this thinking pattern. What is going on there is not you. You're simply aware of it, but you're not it. You're simply aware that right now it's, Spring is coming and it's warming up. But you're not the weather. You're simply aware that the weather is warming up. Then it's summertime. It's hot. You're aware of it. It's hot. And then fall comes and it's starting to cooling off. You're aware that it's cooling off. But that awareness is not getting cold and it's not getting hot. That awareness remains a mechanism that is aware of things. And same thing here. You're simply aware of your thoughts, but you're not your thoughts. And don't invest in it. Don't get into this investment of empowering your mind and being able to create stuff. You're just getting the wheel running faster. So you're making it more noisy. Simply be aware of it, that it's here, and be indifferent to your mind. What I think during the day, whatever thoughts going through my head, it's basically none of my business. My mind will do whatever it wants to do. It goes to all kinds of places, just like yours. Because it's the nature of the mind to go to all these places, to go in the past, to go in the future, to worry, to, to be jealous, to be angry. It's in the mind is happening. And you're simply aware of it. Anybody has any questions or anything you, you feel like sharing with me? You will talk more about this uh, at the retreat, don't you? Oh, definitely at the retreat, we're going to, at the retreat, that's a very good thing you brought. Yeah, seven days, no phones, no nothing, no worry about the world outside, the war, the pandemic, blah, blah, blah. And we're in this place that we can finally give you an opportunity to let go of whatever the story is, is there and to really come to the silence, to really come to this place of discovering this other part of yourself. Yeah, happy to hear that. Looking forward to it. Yeah, and it's not online and it's not from the distance, but now we have time. It means we have created this opportunity we've given ourselves this chance 
for transformation to come outside of outside and really see that the world that you're involved in and you're observing outside world and what is going on inside world is actually it's the same one they're just mirroring each other neither of them are real the outside world with its stories and your inside world with your stories are a mirror of each other and none of them have any reality to it and you realize that and you become free from it yeah this will be the fifth time that i will participate you know and for every time that i've been in our out your retreats things in is changing within me you know so I'm really yeah. excited about it to see what's happening this time. Because yeah. a lot of blockages is just disappearing and I got transformed, you know, to a new le level. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, the why, why you go to India and you sit with the guru? Why you go sit with Papaji or with any, any highly evolved teacher? Because what they, their presence and the Buddha field, the energy field that is created in this, in this area, wherever it is, in this bubble, it creates an environment for activating you. It creates the environment for the growth, for expansion. It, you're giving yourself an opportunity to change in in the cellular level by putting yourself in a pressure cooker you want to cook rice in half an hour and you put some rice and you put some water salt whatever you want and you put it in a pressure cooker the pressure cooker cooks that rice in half an hour which if you were just going through the process of boiling it and and then whatever you're going to do it would take maybe an hour an hour and a half so you go into the bubble you go sit with a teacher you go into the enlightened state and environment to give yourself a chance for transformation and what is the transformation to free you from this cycle that creates suffering creates loneliness creates separation you want to get free from that ultimately you want to live your life being happy but we think happiness is in getting the objects of our desires which is really nice when you get what you want but it doesn't last very, very long. You're happy for a period of time and then you fall back into your old self because the object of the desire that you acquire is happiness is short term. We want to find this place inside our own selves, which is always happy which is free from fear and anxiety, from ups and downs. That's what I want. And that's what Jesus Christ calls it. The kingdom of heaven is within. The kingdom of heaven, you find it. That's where my father is in the kingdom of heaven. That's within yourself. It's here. But it's a state of consciousness. It's about raising your vibrations to a fifth dimensional vibrational frequency entering into the 5d means you have evolved into superman what nietzsche frederick nietzsche in, in thus spake zarathustra also sprach zarathustra talks about the birth of the superman and Osho, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh spoke about it a lot, is to leave your old self, which is 
limited, very limited, very needy, very much involved with his mind, very much involved with his emotions. To go beyond that into a higher level of consciousness. And it's not possible to have this transformation to take place with mind, with strengthening the power of your mind. That's not going to happen. That's just going to keep you down. You have to learn to go beyond that. And to go beyond that, it has steps. You need to learn how to take the right steps to go beyond this. It's not rocket science. It's, it's just the fundamentals the, of the laws of existence of how you can go to a higher level of consciousness is it's got steps like anything else. And it's possible. It's possible because there's been people who've done it before you. And since they've done it, that means you can do it. Saratistra? <clears throat> yeah. I, I may be a bit slow, but when I'm not my thinking mind, who am I? Mm. That's a good question. That's a good question. When I'm not my thinking mind, Who am I? And isn't that a thought? I am just thinking to ask that question. So this is a thought, right? When I'm not my thinking mind, who am I? So that's a thought too, isn't it? Yeah? Isn't that a thought? It's a very holy thought. It's a very profound thought because this thought that you just brought up is the last thought that is going to lead you to full awakening. The last significant thought in your entire life is this thought. When you come to this thought, that means you are have you are at the edge of awakening because finally the self mechanism is activated and you're asking this question who am I? And that, which happened right now, I'm very proud of this. I'm very proud of you, Marit, because this question, this what you said came genuinely. You really recognize that in this moment of, if I'm not my thinking mind, then who am I? This is entering into the gateways. This is right at the gateway of heaven. You're walking into it. You're walking into it. And as you enter, as you're here, if I'm not my thinking mind, if I stop even asking that question, 
all of a sudden you get a glimpse of I am. It's a glimpse of I am. I'm here. I am. I'm not this. I'm not that. It's just I amness. Who is looking through these eyes? It's the entire existence operating right now. From this person, her name is Marit, but when she has no name, it's the entire existence. It's God itself. It's consciousness. It's her majesty. The one who created the world. That is your true identity. So when you come to this place of awakening. That you genuinely ask this question. If I'm not what I'm thinking. Then who am I? And in that very moment, all of a sudden, Her Majesty reveals itself. She shows herself to herself. That maybe can be a good. Helpful for the atonement today, maybe. What's that? Maybe the, you could use that as a title for today's broadcast. If I am not... If I'm not my thoughts, my thoughts. who am I? That's a good one. Thank you. You <laughs> made my life very easy. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. There are moments during the day that you're not thinking. You're sitting somewhere, you're doing something, but you have no thoughts. And a lot of people are not aware of it. So it's the entire consciousness is operating to this unit. This guy, you call him Zaratustra. But inside, inside of it, there is nobody there. It's just existence is operating to this guy. So existence wants to, for example, taste water. Consciousness, God wants to taste water and wants to taste it through this unit. So. Drinks a little bit water. Then it wants to have a little bit coffee. So it drinks, it wants to taste coffee. But it has no form. So it can't taste coffee because it's formless. For it, in order to be able to taste coffee, it needs to have a body. Without the body, it's not going to be able to drink coffee. So it creates the body. Then through the body, it's going to experience the taste of the coffee through its senses. And it's doing it to each and everybody simultaneously. Because God, consciousness, is infinite. It's infinite. It's everywhere. It's infinity. So it can be anything at once simultaneously. It doesn't have to be one thing. It's hundreds of different things. Billions of different things. Simultaneously. <laughs> this understanding may first come as an intellectual understanding. You may intellectually become aware of it. 
But as you hang in there and you work on yourself, then it transforms into a daily experience and becomes your own direct experience and knowing. It will come. It's just a matter of time. Today is a very nice day. Very good day. I'm very happy because my dear sister, Marit, she went through this major transformation and she genuinely asked this question. This is like huge. And it snowballs after that because the more you become aware of it, the more it's going to just reveal itself because it wants to awaken. If it didn't want to awaken, it wouldn't call you on this path. If you're called here, then there is, you got some business to do. You wouldn't be here. You would be somewhere else. If you're here, you got some business to take care of. And the business is to awaken enlightenment. To what's enlightenment? What's, what is enlightenment? Enlighten me. Enlighten. The light comes. The light represents the knowing. It means no more illusions. No more fear. No more misunderstanding. The light has come. I got enlightened, means I awakened to the truth of who I am, not who I think I am. Very well. So any comments, any questions, anybody has anything to say? So just an announcement that we have moved our retreat from Ore, uh, Sweden, to an area uh, 45 minutes away from Stockholm called, called Mushka. So we went back and forth and we just felt everything that this year it was difficult for a lot of our participants to come to um, middle or northern of Sweden and we just wanted to make it more simple and we found this beautiful retreat center 45 minutes away from Stockholm uh, at, at, close to the water and uh, I haven't seen the place but the pictures that I've seen and the videos that Annelie sent me I, I'm very impressed and I'm really looking forward to seeing it because I knew Anneli and Artie, they both went and checked out the place. They spent the night there. They felt it. And they both speak about it very highly. So I'm really looking forward to this experience. And I know the weather is going to be warmer uh, in Mushka than in Ore. <laughs> and our transportation is going to be much easier. And also uh, our beloved brother, Baram G is coming from Spain. And for him, it's going to be very much easier to come to Ore and for us to pick him up and to drop him off. So I'm happy about our decision and the direction we're going. Uh, this is as far as the accommodation I can accommodate two more people. I only have room for two more people, two more participants. Uh, and that's it. So if you're interested, reach out and uh, we'll be more than happy to give you information. We will upgrade our uh, website today. Uh, Amir and I are gonna get on it and, uh, and we're gonna put the proper information about uh, this retreat center, um, Ar Ar Arbatra, is that right? Am I pronouncing it correctly, um, Hilde? Uh, 
The what did you the, say? You the, said, name of, the name of the retreat in Mushka. It's called, the, the island is called Mushka. Mushka, right. No, not in the, at the end. Yeah, I, I don't think like you have that. that. Right. That uh, is an island by the coast. Right. Yeah. Cool. And you can drive to it. Good. Yeah, with the with cars and everything because it's a road all, all the way. Is that Rapanu. archipelago? It's in archipelago. Is that what it is? Yes, it is. Yeah, great. It's very beautiful. close to the water, so it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I love I love Swedish archipelago. Uh, went with Christina and Annalie a couple of times on a boat, and it was very beautiful. I love it. I look forward to it. I feel very good about the whole thing. Um, I, the fact that it's much easier now to get there, that takes a lot of pressure off of me because I was really concerned about how everyone's going to get to Ore. I mean, we all love Ore. Ore is also home and has supported us for a number of years. But uh, sometimes energetically, you can see something's difficult. And then all of a sudden, something else opens up that is much easier to get to. So, yeah. So anyway, um, we're going to have uh, our enlightenment retreat from June 6th, this coming June, to June 13th. Check-in is on the 6th and check-out is on the 13th. And my beloved friend, brother, Bahramji, an incredible Sufi musician, very mystical man, is also joining us in order to create and help to raise our vibrations to the 5D consciousness and to create the ambiance and the mood and the energy of being able to transform and go through this transformation of re realizing our true self. So it was very important for me to include him and to be able to facilitate and create this Buddha field. So that's what's going on. Again, as I mentioned, we have space for two more participants. And uh, if you have the means, I highly recommend that uh, you jump in and join us. Um, I don't know, of course, what's going to happen in September, October, if pandemic's going to come back, if I can, I have the opportunity to go on another European tour and come and tour in Europe. For now, we're not taking anything for granted and we're taking what we can. This is happening right now. We're going to be doing it. And then... We'll see what happens. Most probably I'm going to have another retreat in Tulum in October or November. I'm not sure. I'll take it one day at a time to see how the stuff, things happening in the world and, and whatever the world is going to give me. If opens up the door to go back to Europe and tour, I'm open to it. If it shuts down the doors to go to Europe, then we're going to meet in South America or Central America. So we'll take it one day at a time and see where this energy is going to. For uh, those of you who are viewing uh, this um, webinar and interested in my uh, social media pages, uh, the name of my pages is Zarathustra 5D. My website is zarathustra.tv. And my email is info at zarathustra.tv. So if you want to send us an email and you have questions uh, or any comments, feel free to communicate with me. Our next academy is going to be next Wednesday. And I will be broadcasting that from, I don't know, either here or Los Angeles. I'm not sure. I send you my love from Sedona, wherever you are. Love you very much. Look forward to seeing you.
wherever you are, just practice being still, stay in the center of yourself. And always remember that your power, your true power, the power of love, it's within yourself. And it starts from you loving yourself. It's you who generates and you're the power source of this love. It's not coming from the outside. It's coming from within you because God lives within you. The source consciousness is operating through you. So you are the one. You're the one that you're looking for. So if you have that within yourself, then you know that that's the source of love and that's the source of creation. And there's no room for fear. Fear can come and go, but they cannot rule you because you're bigger than that. Remember that. You are bigger than that. Don't allow this blah, blah, blah to make you shrink and become small. Remember one thing, that when in your spiritual practice and evolution, you have finally come to stillness, that the teaching has brought you into just being still. And being silent. That's an indication of you have arrived to the very end of your journey. It's an indication. 
because every single awakened being on this planet, every single awakened being, any enlightened master, any prophet, any sage, they all at the end of their journey arrived at the same place. They went beyond their mind into silence. They all became silent and very still. There has never been an enlightened master on this planet with a busy mind. They have all transcended the mind. They've gone beyond it into the silence, which is into the 5D consciousness, the fifth dimensional vibrational consciousness, 5D, is where there is no duality. It's simply still and silence. And from there, your action, however you act, you're acting from silence and being still. That's a different story than being involved in the world. Even though if you react, even though if you go to war and you defend yourself or you kill or you fight, that's coming from stillness. Similarly to your speech. It's a different story when you speak from silence and you come from a place of being still, your speech comes from there. There's a quality to it. There's a clarity and a purity that you never find into an ordinary mind. And the third is what in Zoroastrians talk about the righteous thoughts, thinking from stillness, thinking from silence. The ability to use the mind from a still point and a silent place is a world difference with the busy mind. It's like heaven and hell. The ordinary world, which is ruled by busy mind, is hell. But simultaneously, there are beings that are, have evolved their consciousness that do operate in the world from the no mind place, which is still and silent. There are two different type of lives. One is hell and the other one is heaven. One is full of bliss and understanding and compassion. And the other is impatient, imbalanced, chaotic, always pointing the finger at others, always somebody else is to be blamed, it never looks at itself. And it operates from duality, as if duality is real, as if there is such a thing as separation. That's a pure illusion. Because separation doesn't exist. It's never existed and it will never exist. It's impossible to be separated. Because it's just non-existing. It's only, it only appears to be separated. It only looks like it. But nothing separated from anything. Because there's only one. God. Consciousness, Her Majesty, the Supreme, is the only thing that exists. Nothing else exists. 
so you don't even have to worry about the oneness because you're already the oneness. It's just a recognition of who you are, not becoming who you want to be. And that's what we're working on. Thank you very much for joining me. I send you my love and I look forward to seeing you next week. Namaste. God bless you all.